The European Commission says the pandemic is widening the gap between members of the bloc as already indebted states fall deeper into debt. Eurozone finance ministers have met to discuss the next steps to recover from the COVID-19 crisis, which has hit the poorest of EU states the hardest. The Commission says the $900 billion joint recovery fund should address the imbalances to prevent the risk of accentuating divergences. The meeting comes as several countries across Europe tighten movement restrictions to tackle a second wave of COVID-19 infections. And our correspondent Jack Parrick joins us now from Brussels. Good to have you back with us, Jack. Now, Eurozone finance ministers at this meeting have been told that the pandemic is only exacerbating the economic divide between member states that use the euro. What sort of resolutions can we expect from their meeting? Well, I don't think we'll expect any really firm resolutions coming out of the meeting today. But what they're trying to do is to discuss among themselves how they can make sure that the EU's budget, known as the multi-annual financial framework, and this big recovery fund, uh, known as Next Generation EU, can be used to ensure that there is some more equity in the finances and in the pockets of EU citizens. The way they do that is through something called cohesion funds. Essentially, m you get more money out of the budget if you're a poorer country and you need more money to help your citizens. So they'll be discussing that. But they're also looking into how they can make sure that the euro is strengthened and the European Commission on Wednesday will announce a new paper, a plan to look at how they can make sure the single currency is used to its best advantage on international markets. And this comes in the wake of Brexit. Today as well, the negotiations on financial services started between the United Kingdom and the European Union. They're looking in to how those financial services, especially the ones that deal in the euro currency, can be brought inside the Eurozone. A senior member of the European Parliament from the centre-right EPP group writing today that the EU needs to come up with a master plan to deal with that. So there's a lot of sort of uh, up-in-the-air negotiations really and discussions going on among the Eurozone finance ministers. Yes, and just on that $900 billion fund that uh, EU member countries have agreed on, uh, they were, some of the wealthier nations were criticised for how long it took for them to agree on reaching such a deal. Uh, now we're waiting to see when and how this money will be spent. Uh, will any progress be made on that front at this meeting? Well, they will edge closer to sort of agreements on how the money can be taken out. You'll remember that actually it was Mark Rutte, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, who, who was the leader of that frugal four block of northern countries that wanted to make sure that there were really strict conditions on that. Well, just last week, he had to resign his government over a scandal over payments, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the finance ministry demanding tax repayments from uh, especially ethnic background people in the Netherlands. So that's a block that's been removed, actually, from this sort of fixture. Uh, but really what they're looking into is not only how it's spent, but also how the European Commission, which was permitted as part of this, uh, will go out onto international markets and raise the money. Because this is the first time they've ever really been allowed to do this using their AAA rating. So that's another aspect that the finance ministers will be trying to look at, how they can pressure the European Commission to make that possibility the most beneficial for EU citizens. We also know that EU decision makers have been criticised for the slow pace of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout as countries including the UK, the US and now India are racing ahead of some of Europe's major economies on that front. Can you just bring us up to speed with that? Have they improved the distribution of those vaccines? Well, Oscar, to be honest, for the European Union, this vaccine rollout is proving a real headache. Pfizer-BioNTech, Pfizer announced today that actually there might be another delay to the production that is happening right here in Belgium in the town of Pers at their production site. But Belgium, for instance, in a country of 10 million odd people, has actually only managed to vaccinate just over 95,000 so far as a first dose. So they're having a real struggle to get those vaccines. They've got a huge portfolio, over 2 billion doses of vaccines that they've signed up with these companies and all the different vaccine candidates. Um, but while they've managed to buy them all, what they're struggling is to administer them. But we have to give the EU some sort of leeway on this because it is actually the member states' governments who deal with the vaccinations. It's national health services in the EU who are the ones that need to administer it.
Okay, Jack Parrick, thank you so much for bringing us up to date from what looks like a very chilly Brussels right now. Thank you.